You're watching the Red Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. A rough week for the running Rebels, the fans, and the Las Vegas community. Straight ahead in the Red Zone, we focus on the injury to star guard Rashad Vaughn and find out how and if his production can be replaced. And we take a look back at the life of a legend, Jerry Tarkanian. A discussion on how a coach changed a city and shaped a program in the process impacting countless lives. This is the Fox 5 Reb Zone Sports Show, presented by Born and Raised, the official home of the Rebels on the Road, and by Cox Communications. That smile, something that we saw so much and will never forget. Jerry Tarkanian being remembered as he should be, as the greatest rebel of them all. Good evening. Welcome inside the Reb Zone as we reflect on the life of Coach Tark, Kevin Bullinger, alongside UNLV running Rebels head coach Dave Rice. On Wednesday, we lost the man that made UNLV basketball a household name. Jerry Tarkanian came into this city, and it was never the same again. Jerry Tarkanian arrived in Las Vegas in 1973 after turning Long Beach State into a national power. He soon set his focus on making UNLV basketball the jewel of the desert. Sporting a bald head and chopping on his trademark towel, Tark the Shark became an instant hit in Las Vegas. Everybody runs the floor right now. It was Tarkanian's idea to call UNLV the Runnin' Rebels, and run they did. With Tarkanian at the helm, UNLV quickly rose to national prominence, making a Final Four in just his fourth season. In a city full of A-list celebrities, Tarkanian took a back seat to no one. He counted Frank Sinatra, Bill Cosby, and Walter Payton among his friends. His run in Rebels gave Las Vegas a new identity, from Gucci Row to magazine covers. This was Tark's team and Tark's town. But this night belongs to Las Vegas. The Shark comes away a winner in a record-setting night, 103-73. Gary Tarkanian's crowning moment came in 1990, when UNLV won the school's first and only national basketball title blowing out Duke 103 to 73. The people of Las Vegas flooded the streets for the biggest party the city has ever seen. The celebration would be short lived though as the NCAA watchdogs continued to hound Tarkanian. This infamous picture sealed his fate. Three UNLV players sitting in a hot tub with Richard the Fixer Perry, a man twice convicted of sports bribery. Hunt will have to do something. Put the three. Three. After a heartbreaking loss to Duke in the 1991 Final Four, a tumultuous 1992 season and with the NCAA breathing down his neck, then UNLV President Bob Maxson forced Tarkanian to resign. He left UNLV with 509 wins, four Final Fours, and the 1990 National Championship. Tark had a brief stint in the NBA as head coach of the San Antonio Spurs, but he was fired 20 games into the season in a dispute with owner Red McCombs. He used the buyout money from his Spurs contract to fund a lawsuit against the NCAA, alleging more than two decades of harassment. The NCAA settled with Tarkanian in 1998 without admitting guilt, paying him $2.5 million. I mean, that's the guy that's won a ton of games because he understands sometimes just keep it very simple. In 1995, Tarkanian returned to his alma mater, Fresno State, to take over a struggling program. 
Again, he found great success, and again, the NCAA followed him around with a microscope. Things just didn't work out, but this year was a hard year on me. Tarkanian retired from coaching for good in 2002 with the fifth highest winning percentage in the history of college basketball. UNLV honored Tark by naming the court at the Thomas and Mack after him. In his retired years, he remained a front row spectator and big fan of the running Rebels. When former player Dave Rice was named head coach, he vowed to bring the brand of game Tarkanian made famous in Las Vegas back. With it came the return of the Jaws music. And once again, the running Rebels are running and winning. In 2013, at long last, Tarkanian was inducted into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame, the crowning achievement in an illustrious career. Jerry Tarkanian left his mark on basketball. He changed the landscape of Las Vegas sports. He left a legacy at UNLV. The towel may have been chopped for the last time, but the shark will live forever. Well, this has been a rough week for everybody, but I think that one thing is we're hearing celebrations of his life, not just locally, but, but nationally, and I think that it's kind of neat to hear some of the stories that people are telling. No doubt, Kevin. It's been a very, very sad week uh, with the passing of Coach Tark, but also a week we've been able to celebrate the life of a great coach, but even a better man, a man who touched so many people's lives and, and truly made a difference. What made your decision to come to UNLV? Was it Coach Tarkanian? Oh, absolutely. It was Coach Tarkanian and the program that he had built at UNLV. The excitement, the style of play, the tradition, just all the things that went along with that. But it started with Coach Tark. You played for him. You coached under him for a, a, a while there, right after you uh, got done playing. What is your takeaway now? What you learned from Coach Tark that are still with you and what you're using today? I think the first thing is he was an innovator as a basketball coach. You think about man-to-man -man pressure defense, you think about offensive transition, his ability to recruit players, to bring in players from diverse backgrounds from all over the country, to mold them together, to play hard, to play together. He was a fantastic basketball coach. I think the biggest thing, though, was his ability to, to motivate players to see the best in every player, to give guys an opportunity, and then to make that player feel like he was special. Without his contribution, the team wouldn't be nearly as good. And he did that with assistant coaches, with support staff, with role players, star players. He was just a master motivator. After you came back to be the head coach here, and he, he was around a lot, mm -hmm. especially in the first couple of years, your players really kind of felt that presence and, and fed off of his knowledge as well, even though he wasn't there doing X's and O's, correct? It was a special time when he was able to come to practice. Our players would literally run to greet Coach Tark. They understood his importance in the tradition of the program, what he had built at UNLV, and I know it meant a lot to him as well. And for Stacy Ogman and me to be here, for him to be able to come to some of our games, for him to be able to see us beat number one North Carolina our first year and to see a lot of other wins against ranked teams and some of the good things that we've done, special for us and certainly special for the community. He, he is Las Vegas basketball, no doubt. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a, a moment of silence and for Tark, and you're also doing something special with patches here for the rest of the season. We are. I, I've got the patch on today. We wore, we wore the patches yesterday in our uniforms at, at Air Force. We'll wear those the rest of the year. We're wearing black uniforms against Boise on Wednesday. We just want to remember Coach Tark and, and what he's meant to all of us, to the program, to the city of Las Vegas, and, and our community as a whole. Public memorial set for March 1st at the Thomas and Mac. Of course, we'll give you more information as we get details on that. But for now, it is time to turn our attention to the happenings of the week for the running Rebels. And boy, did a lot happen. Up next in the red zone, a look back at the win against Fresno State, the Rashad Vaughn injury, and how the Rebels responded Saturday at Air Force. Lots to talk about. We're going to get to it all in just two minutes. You're watching the Fox 5 Red Zone Sports Show, presented by Born and Raised, the official home of the Rebels on the Road, and by Cox Communications. We begin our recap of last week's game with Tuesday night's tilt against Fresno State at the Thomas and Mac. The running Rebels and Bulldogs were a bit sluggish out of the gate as each team hit only one of its first 11 shots. 
Once UNLV got going, it was from long distance. Cody Doolin, Jordan Cornish, Rashad Vaughn, and Doolin again, all bombing threes from around the court. Cornish added a triple plus a foul, and the four-point play helped propel the Rebels to an early five-point lead. Chris Wood had a monster game, epitomized by this sequence. Two blocked shots, and then the big man leading the way in transition, the pass to Jalon Kendrick, who lobs it right back to Wood for the slam. Vaughn added a running one-hander and a three as UNLV built a 35-25 halftime lead. In the second half, the Rebs came out firing to extend the lead. McCaw hit a three. The alley oop to Wood. And Wood taking advantage of his size as he backs his man down and gets the hoop and the harm. The three-point play extended the lead to 16. Julian Lewis tried to single-handedly keep Fresno in it. Back-to-back -back threes. Then a steal and lay-in on the other end cut the lead to just eight. But there would be no comeback allowed on this night. Wood works inside for the bucket. Then McCaw to Wood for the slam to open it back up to 15. A late game skirmish led to technicals on both sides, but it showed a not back down attitude. Wood ends up with 27 points, 19 rebounds and seven blocked shots, leading the Rebels to a comfortable 73-61 victory. Actually, I thought they were going to call a foul on me when I uh, blocked him the first time. But I guess when he went up again, I just tried. I just, you know, I was thinking I was going to get a foul call, but I guess I just I blocked the shot, you know. And, uh, you know, when he was going down, coach told me to run the floor. I could hear him on the sideline. And uh, JK, me and JK made eye contact through the lob. So it's just, that's, that's how we play in team basketball. I knew I had to come out there and, you know, grab rebounds. And, you know, um, I, I don't remember how tall they are, but I know I'm much taller than them. But uh, I had to rebound, you know, be aggressive, and, you know, uh, stay in the post. You know, I tend to uh, uh, get outside a little bit, but um, I think I, I did a good job of staying in, inside. Let's start with the Rashad Vaughn injury. It happened with just under a minute to go on a routine play, and nobody knew that he was really injured, at least not that bad, until the next day. Yeah, he tweaked it on that play, and I actually asked him, do you need a substitute to, to shoot the free throw? He says, no, coach, I'm fine. And so I never thought anything of it until the next day. And how did you hear the news? Did he just go and get a routine checkup on something like that and then it came up with something? Exactly, with our trainer and then he had an MRI the next day and then that afternoon I got a phone call that uh, it was, the news wasn't good. So. What's the prognosis for him down the stretch? Well, obviously we're going to make sure Rashad's 100% healthy before we put him back on the floor. He's optimistic he's going to try his best to get back for the Mount West Conference Tournament. We never put his, his in, the injury or his, his knee in jeopardy whatsoever. So we'll, we'll, just, we'll leave it open in it, but I have a lot of confidence in Rashad's work ethic. Well, obviously, a lot of production has to be replaced. You already don't have the deepest bench mm -hmm. in terms of people who have seen a lot of minutes. How are you going to handle the rotations going forward the rest of the season to try and make up for Rashad Vaughn. Well, you think about Rashad in conference play, 18 points, five rebounds, big five rebounds. He was becoming a very good rebounder for us, 42% from three. Uh, other guys will just have to step up. That's the way it works. Other guys will get more minutes. We'll move Jalon Kendrick back into the starting lineup. And it's just a situation where guys are just going to have to make plays and, and make up for the loss of a very good player. Overshadowed after the fact with the Vaughn injury was the big night from Chris Wood. Mm -hmm. Uh, another double-double, almost a triple-double as well. Yeah, it's seven block shots, and that's a hard way to get a triple-double. But uh, you think about 27 points and 19 rebounds, and how impressive is 19 rebounds? Uh, he's just rebounding so well for us this season, a big part of what we're doing. Well, he carried that over to Saturday. The run of Rebels did travel without Rashad Vaughn to Colorado Springs on Saturday for a morning tip at Air Force. Rashad Vaughn and the biggest worry with a short bench was foul trouble and that's exactly what happened. Patrick McCaw picked up his third foul with just under four minutes left in the first half. The Rebels still hung tough. Chris Wood gets the dunk and good luck Okonovo hit a baseline jumper. UNLV was up 26-25 at the break despite shooting just two of 12 from three point range. The seesaw affair was on for the second half. Matt Mooney hit a three. UNLV dug in. Jordan Cornish to Okonobo for the slam. Then Okonobo with the offensive rebound and lay in. And on the break, Kendrick goes off the glass to Wood for the highlight reel dunk. 
after Mooney hit another three and Merrick Olasinski knocked down a couple of buckets. McCaw caught fire, knocking down threes from everywhere. Not one, not two or three, but four triples. And this was a one point game with 12 minutes to go. Back and forth it would go. Zach Koser hits a three. Wood followed by going off glass. Koser followed with another triple. Then McCaw goes back to back from downtown and UNLV had a 60 to 58 lead with just over six minutes left. Okunovo with a sweet feed to Wood for another dunk. But Koser kept getting great looks at three and kept knocking them down with the Rebels failing to get out on him. The final three put Air Force up 71 to 66 with just 43 seconds left. The Falcons hit their free throws down the stretch and this late three by Wood was too little too late as the Rebels come up just short once again, 76 to 75. Wood ends up with 31 points, McCaw with 20, but the Rebels turn the ball over 16 times and only force five by Air Force to fall to five and seven in the Mountain West Conference. The key player in this post Rashad Vaughn era right now in this season has to be Patrick McCaw. He can't get three fouls in the first 16 minutes of the game. Yeah, it was difficult. We count on Patrick uh, for ball distribution, for offense, for rebounding, for steals, for, for everything. I mean, he just has become a very, very accomplished player, and it was tough with him sitting on the bench and only playing eight minutes in the first half. But then he lights it up in the second half with 20 points, most of them from, from downtown. He's somebody who could take a game over the way Rashad Vaughn does. Well, you think about no points in the first half because of the foul trouble, 20 points in the second half, and he's actually leading the conference in assists as a freshman. Huge numbers for, for us, for him, and uh, we have a lot of confidence in him moving forward. The number that jumped off the stat sheet, 16 turnovers. This team has done so well lately mm -hmm. in terms of not turning the ball over, and uh, it, it seemed that it was a big bugaboo on Saturday. The two numbers we've always looked at since conference play started were rebounding. Uh, we out-rebounded Air Force yesterday, They've done a much better job, but out-rebounded Fresno when we beat them on Tuesday, but the turnovers were back up again. Cannot turn the ball over 16 times on the road. There was, we gave up 20 points off our turnovers. Way too big a number to be able to win that game and end up losing by one. Well, we have a big week of games ahead for the Runnin' Rebels as they get a chance for some payback for two close losses earlier this season. Straight ahead, we preview Wednesday night's home game against Boise State and Saturday's trip to Albuquerque to take on New Mexico. That's next as the Red Zone rolls on. You're watching the Fox 5 Red Zone Sports Show, presented by Born and Raised, the official home of the Rebels on the Road, and by Cox Communications. Two big time opponents this week for the Running Rebels as they get Boise State at home and then their annual trip to the pit on Saturday. Wednesday night, Boise State comes into the Thomas and Mac and they will be in a foul mood. After playing hot and getting back into the conversation for an NCAA bid, the Broncos dropped a big game at Fresno on Saturday afternoon. Beating Boise means trying to contain Derek Marks. On January 13th at the Taco Bell Arena, Marks went for 28 points in the overtime win against the Rebels that saw UNLV fall apart in the five minute extra period. On Saturday, UNLV travels to Albuquerque to take on New Mexico, a place where the Rebels picked up a huge road win last year. On January 21st at the TNM, the Lobos scored a 71-69 win as Hugh Greenwood went six for nine from three-point range and then called out a Twitter follower that made derogatory comments about his mother who is battling cancer. The Lobos will be wearing pink jerseys on Saturday for breast cancer awareness. No doubt time to add some extra intensity to this game. Without Rashad Vaughn, UNLV will have to take care of the basketball in both of these games and lean on Chris Wood to be effective inside. Boise State, Derek Marks, those two go hand in hand. Absolutely, he, he's been probably the best player in the conference during conference play. Made every big shot you, know, you would expect from a senior. We gotta make sure we know where he is, but they got a lot of three-point shooters on their team. We held him to only five three-point makes in, in the first contest, came up just a little bit short. He had a big win in Albuquerque last year. Hugh Greenwood had a huge game here as well, but they've also got a lot of, of other weapons you have to worry about. They do. Craig Neal does a great job coaching, and uh, they got a good team. Greenwood, Delaney, two seniors, but a lot of inside players as well. 
even though this Twitter guy that, that caused the controversy had nothing to do with UNLV or the Run Rebel basketball team, perception-wise, I would assume that you know you're going to go into a hostile mm -hmm. environment on Saturday in Albuquerque. Well, again, what we talked about last time about it, it was reprehensible what was done. I mean, you think about the struggles with the Greenwood family, our thoughts and prayers go out to what they're going through, and just nothing but just reprehensible what took place in terms of the Twitter. One last break. We're going to come back with the Run and Rebel Plays of the Week. But first, here's a look at how other Mountain West teams did over the weekend. You're watching the Fox 5 Red Zone Sports Show, presented by Born and Raised, the official home of the Rebels on the Road, and by Cox Communications. Wednesday night, important for fans to come out, support the team, and also be there for, for Coach Tark as they pay tribute as well. Absolutely. Big game for us against Boise State Broncos. Uh, we'll be wearing our black uniforms to, to honor Coach Tark, and then also an opportunity for fans to honor a great man and, and a fabulous basketball coach. That's an 8 o'clock tip at the Thomas and Mac. We will be there, and we hope to see you there. Thanks for joining us inside the Reb Zone. We leave you with the Running Rebel Plays of the Week. Good night. We were born to Fox Red Zone Sports Show was presented by Born and Raised, the official home of the Rebels on the Road, and by Cox Communications.